What's the craziest thing you've seen in person? Story 1. When I was working nights on security, I saw two cats getting chased by a rat. Worked in a factory which was along a river and had been raised with a cellar below it. Every evening the rats, who were about the size of small dogs, would squeeze out through openings and raid the garbage cans. Thank you for this comment. For it validates a memory I had since early childhood, which all adults in my life vehemently denied. I was about 10, maybe 11, and my mother, younger sister, aunt and I went on holiday to the nearby seaside. It was late in the evening when we returned from a long walk around the resort, and as we passed the opening to the moonlit alley, I caught a shadow in my peripheral view. I turned to see a moving, medium-sized ball of fur crossing said alley. I grabbed my mother's hand and start, look mommy, a kitty, but stop abruptly when I notice the long, thin tail trailing right behind the ball of fur. It then dawns on my 10-year-old brain that in front of me was a rat the size of a small dog. I told my mother that, but she said it must have been a cat or something and I didn't see clearly. We went back and forth like that all the way to the hotel. In hindsight, she probably didn't want to scare me by confirming that it was, in fact, a rat of mutant size. But for 10-year-old me, there was some frustration that I wasn't believed, and my scientific truth was denied. I could give less of a toss about that rat itself, I just wanted to know that I was right, and it wasn't all in my head. Thanks, this really validates my inner child. Now I know that rats can reach the size of their supposed hunters. When I was 12 and living with my parents, the neighbor on the opposite side of our back garden raised pigs and didn't do a very good job, so they had huge rats living there as well. The size of cats. At the same time, we got a new dog that seemed to have been born to be an assassin. At first, we would find one dead rat every three days, but as he perfected his hunting method, we would regularly find five to six dead rats every day. He would usually hunt them during the night, but I saw his technique a couple of times. The rat would charge him and he would simply duck, press his paw on the rat's head, then bite and snap its neck. All done in one second. My friend's cat had a bird bully. Occasionally, the cat would just be chilling in the grass in some backyard, and this group of birds would come land on the awning and start squawking, and one specific one would start dive-bombing her. She was kind of too old to really fight back, so when it started happening, she would either run under the shed or into the garage, but after a while, just sat there and ignored it. I don't think the bird ever pecked at the cat or anything, just kept swooping down to annoy her. Story 2. Neutering a dog the other day, he appeared to be a cryptor kid. That is, one normal testicle and one not descended, retained somewhere in the abdomen. Well, we can still neuter these, in fact, it's even more important to do so since the retained one can later develop cancer if left behind. So into the abdomen I went, looking for the retained testicle which I was expecting to find somewhere between the kidney and inguinal ring. Found a uterus. Story 3. Not violent, so this might not fit in, but pretty crazy anyway. Me and a couple of friends are playing mini-golf and we're waiting for a man and his four-year-old son ahead of us to finish up. The kid has no idea what's going on, but they're having fun. The next green is a series of obstacles and rocks that lead to a pipe and the pipe leads to the hole. It's a tricky shot, par three or four I think. So the dad places the ball and turns away for a second to go get his putter. The kid swipes his putter like a driver and crushes the golf ball. I mean, it flies. It bounces off rocks, obstacles, at least a few that were on different greens entirely, and we're ducking while it bounces around. Eventually, it heads in the direction of the intended green, having bounced over every obstacle. Then the ball calmly rolls onto the green and into the hole. Hole in one. It was pretty crazy as far as mini golf goes. I did something similar at mini golf once with my dad and my brother. Final hole, and if you get a hole in one, the mini golf place gives you a free game. I'm loudly talking smack. Oh, hole in one piece of piss, etc. Must have been listening to some David Lee Roth records or something. Anyway, the guy who owns the place is watching me, like this little jackass, and my family is just cringing. I hit the ball, took the piss, talked smack the whole time, and got a hole-in-one like I said I would. The owner is watching and his jaw hits the floor when I walk over to get myself a free game with the biggest grin on my face. I was an a-hole that day. Story 4. When I was on the school bus on the way to elementary school once, I saw a soccer mom in a large minivan plow right into an older man. 
60 or 70 on a motorcycle. She was going like 30 and he stopped and it looked like he was incredibly hurt and unconscious. So the woman got out of her car to see if he was okay. When she walked up to him, he turned around and slowly got up, but clearly had a broken leg. He then proceeded to start beating the crap out of her right in front of her kids. Yup, a severely hurt old guy was punching this woman in the face while profusely bleeding. Obviously, she just ran away, but to a bus full of elementary schoolers, it was like straight out of an action movie. My story happened on my elementary school bus, too. In grade one, I was on the way home, and we had a fill-in bus driver for a day instead of our regular driver, Todd. This was back before we had bus monitors. I'm 23 now. One kid from my grade named Corey got off the bus and walked behind it to walk to his house. He ended up dropping a book on the ground behind the back tire and when he did, the bus rolled back a foot or so. He instantly was crushed and killed by the bus. We all heard him scream and felt the impact. My sister said she heard the driver say, Oh my god, I think I killed a child, as he ran off the bus. Everyone was crying and freaking out while the driver ran door to door to try to find his parents. Easily the most traumatic experience of my childhood. We all ended up getting off the bus and sitting back on the bus on a neighbor's lawn before emergency help showed up. We were later put on another bus and brought home. I was only six, so too young to fully understand the situation, but old enough to remember it. When I was in grade two, I used to walk to school with my younger sister and a few friends. There was always this younger boy whose mom would walk him across the street to meet us, and we'd walk across a field to school. One day, his mom decided not to walk him across, and he was pretty stoked to be acting like a big kid. Then we heard this screeching and turned around and our friend had been hit by a truck. He smacked his head off the pavement and ended up in the hospital and on the news. He was fine, but it was by far the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Here's a much funnier version of a kid being hit by a bus. The public bus ride home after school. I was sitting somewhat near the front and the bus just made a left turn at an intersection. There's a stop only two bus lengths away from the intersection and there are kids from some school there. Some dumb blonde girl runs directly in front of the bus while waving back at her friends. She turned at the last second as the bus driver slammed on the brakes. Stuff was flying everywhere on the bus but the look on her face as it hit the window was priceless. One of those really rectangular low buses. Anyway, I think she broke her arm, but otherwise it was all right. We had to get on the next bus. Story five. I once saw a Navy corpsman shove a frozen hot dog with a condom on it up the rectum of a passed out drunk Marine. This guy was a raging drunk with a real problem, always getting into fights, hauled in by the MPs, etc. The hot dog comes out, the condom stays in. The next morning when he woke up with one of the worst blackout hangovers of his life, he craps out a condom and swears off drinking for good. Later that afternoon, we fed him the hot dog. Story 6. The day I wasn't murdered walking out of high school in 2006. I was a senior, and it was a half day. My stalker didn't know that. The next day, he was arrested, and still in state prison to this day. Backstory, I was an 18-year-old male who started going to the gym with a friend from school. We befriended an older jacked muscle head who offered to train me for free. This went on for a few months and occasionally would go out for dinner with some activities. Everything seemed fine till one day I was at his house with him after grabbing some wings at a restaurant and we were playing video games. He then turns on his computer and puts straight porn on, which I thought was pretty odd. Then he grabbed my knees and swayed them back and forth, looking at me with a grin. I tell him to stop. We continue to watch, but I'm weirded out now by a Schwarzenegger clone who can easily rip my skeleton body in half. Once more, he goes and touches just above my junk with his fingers, and I push away and say I now have to leave. As I was walking from upstairs to downstairs, a million things rushed through my head, but I left freely. From that day forward, about a two-week span, I begin to get harassing phone calls and such. He goes to my parents' place of work and explains he wants me to apologize for disrespecting him. My parents didn't know what happened yet and he also used my friend, who I mentioned above, as a courier to let me know what his daily activities were, stalking me at my house, what he would do to me when he found me, etc, etc. The final straw was when we had that half day. After getting out, my friend and I go to my parents' place of work and explain everything. He also was at their work that day as well, still demanding an apology. 
Once my parents get the whole story, my friend's phone rings and he puts it on speaker. It's him stating why my friend didn't let him know there was a half day, as he was going to beat me to a bloody pulp and be disfigured for life. After that, we all go down to the police station and file a formal report. While in the station, they immediately know who the man in question is and say he is a flaming homosexual. The DA was also at the station at the time and wanted to take this case on immediately, as he was the main suspect in an unsolved murder a year ago in our hometown, but just couldn't prove it was him. So the next day is spent in the county courthouse with my friend and I, with tapped phones trying to get him to admit to anything, which he didn't. Once, around the time school would be letting out, he was tailed circling my school 17 total times. After that, a couple of squad cars moved in and blocked off a street, as well as a police van, and apprehended him. He had a loaded handgun sitting on the passenger seat. Because of the murder the year before, a search warrant was obtained, and his computers contained gigabytes full of child porn. On top of that, charges from me, they're still trying to put the pieces together on the murder from the year the other guy was murdered. Half day at school saved me from being murdered. Damn, I used to work with a guy like that. I'm not gay, was his mantra, even though nobody ever asked. I sold him some old speakers I had, and while I was there he started offering me booze and was talking about how his friends would get drunk together and see if they could still jack off drunk. Then he put the straight porn on his computer. I left very creeped out. He also liked to pick fights with teenage boys because he liked the feeling of his fists sinking into young flesh. Yeah, overall pretty similar to my story. One of the first clues I should have known was when he immediately went out to get a cell phone after he started to train me and called me about three times a day to see where I was and what I was doing. Probably stalked me the entire time he knew me, now that I think about it. Story 7 I was at Tanglewood for the final concert of the summer, to end in fireworks and the 1812 overture with real cannons. It got dark, and there were hundreds of people on the lawn. And at the climax, when the cannons were firing, they set off the fireworks too close to the ground. Cannons were shooting and multicolored fire rained down on the audience. It was pretty crazy seeing hundreds of people fleeing for their lives while Tchaikovsky boomed and cracked in the background and thousands of burning sparks lit up faces and cars as we ran for cover. Story 8 Posted this before, but it got no traction. About 15 years ago, my family took a trip to Paris. Of course, we went to see the Eiffel Tower. For some reason or another, my sister and I decided that we wanted to have a race from one leg of the tower to the other. As we were about halfway through, I was smoking her of course. A Parisian police officer grabbed me and started yelling. I had no idea what he was saying as he dragged me to the lawn on one side of the tower. I thought I was in big crap for racing under the tower. I was wrong. Apparently, some guy was up on the second tier threatening to jump off. The tower is divided into a couple of landings, and he climbed up onto the roof of the second tier. A huge crowd had gathered on the lawn, and we were all watching him as the police were below trying to coax him off the ledge. Just as he was about to jump, a couple of guys came rappelling down from above him and grabbed him by the jacket. Their momentum carried them past the ledge, and they started falling towards the first tier. I guess the rappeller held onto him long enough so that he kind of slid down the beams and landed on the first tier. He started running around on top of that until more police swarmed him and tackled him. It legit looked like something out of an action movie and I really wish recording devices were more universal at that point, as I'm sure I would have captured an amazing video. Story 9 so my wife and I are visiting San Francisco, and we're walking from downtown to Fisherman's Wharf. Downtown has, had, some shady areas, and the shortest route from our hotel to the touristy areas was right through them. On a fine sunny morning, we're out walking, and we notice on the other side of the street a tall black man dressed in drag. He's walking towards an old woman driving a rascal. As they pass, a guy in drag grabs an old lady's hair, throws her onto the ground, and yells, You better pay me my money, bitch! For two quiet Canadians, it was like stepping onto the set of The Wire or something. My first time in San Francisco, I stayed at a hotel in Japantown that was hosting the conference I was there for. The first night in town, after nine hours flying, I ordered room service for dinner and turned the TV on the tourist channel. 
the one that shows local attractions. It brings up Union Square, and I Google map it and realize it's only 10 or so blocks away. So I decided to go for a walk before dark. This takes me apparently directly through the worst district in all of San Francisco, but I was totally unaware. Nothing weird happened at all. But on the way back into the hotel, the bellhop was freaked out when he saw me walking up from that direction around dark. And my cab driver on the way to the airport also pointed out how lucky I was to have made it through that area. When I was 17, I was traveling alone across the US. When I got to San Francisco, I talked to an old homeless guy and asked him where I could find the cheapest hotels slash hostels in town. He led me to an area that had crazy stereotypical stuff like guys in alleyways, standing around a fire in an oil drum. After a short time, he told me that this might not have been a good idea, as a few guys had started following us and were whistling and shouting stuff like, Hey, white boy, you lost or something? And they seemed to know him and were shouting things too slash at him. So we rounded a corner and he just said, run, and we ran. I think they chased us for about a block but I ran all the way to the Greyhound station. I was just in San Francisco in June and had a similar experience. At the cable car turnaround point, we were waiting in line for a while, and this homeless guy who was carrying his homeless sack around with him showed up. He comes up to the line of folks waiting, throws his sack onto the ground and starts yelling something angrily. Not to anyone in particular, mind you. I had no clue what he was saying, but looking closer, he had a noticeable amount of blood seeping from around his mouth. It looked like he had gotten his teeth broken or something. Five minutes later, the police and an ambulance showed up. All the while, he had been pacing back and forth shouting incoherent statements and kicking his sack around. He did shout at the policeman about not wanting to have to be taken on a stretcher. So they just walked him to the car. Glad to hear you both enjoyed the sights and sounds of San Francisco, though. Story 10 I was at a Metallica concert standing next to a shortish marine looking fellow and a huge biker gang looking guy. For some reason they started bickering and then yelling and then pushing and then all out fighting. The marine tried some moves but it was like hitting a brick wall. Seriously this guy was like 6'5 and 400 pounds. The biker guy picked him up and piled this random dude into the concrete floor. I can still hear the sick thud his head made hitting the ground. The biker just laughed and walked into the crowd. I stayed and gave a report, but I have no idea what happened to either of them. The last thing I saw was the Marine's brother slash friend slash whoever talking to the police and weeping. I spent the next month combing news sites to see if I had just seen someone get murdered at a concert. Messed me up for quite a while. Story 11. One time I was on the highway driving and these three bikes were weaving in and out of cars, acting like lunatics. Eventually one of them slows down and the guy behind him doesn't see it, flies into him and then he and his bike get shot into the woods while the other guy skids down the road. Driving by where he flew into the woods you could see torn clothing and an arm hanging in the trees. Turned me off of motorcycles. Also, one time I saw this kid stick his finger into a foot-long poop his friend dropped for $5. I feel the same way about ATVs. Luckily, I didn't see it happen, but the son of a family friend got killed while riding his ATV around an area that had a row of electrical towers. I don't know the exact specifics of what happened, but from what I was told, he was going too fast and somehow got decapitated by one of the wires holding the tower in place. The worst part is that his younger brother was riding with him and was the first person to see his body. Story 12. I live close to the Bay of Fundy, home of the highest tides in the world. And because of all the seawater getting pumped in and out of the bay each day, it kicks up tons of krill and yummy fish food. Because of all that science goodness, whale watching is ridiculously popular there. I've been twice and both times were downright insane. They take you on a fishing boat and within half an hour, you're pretty much surrounded by humpback whales. They're surfacing, breaching, pooping, all that good whale stuff that whales do. Now I'm not sure if you've ever seen a 40 ton creature leap out of literally nowhere and create a tsunami, but it is mind blowing. Last time I went, a mother and her newborn came out to investigate us. And I mean really investigate us. The little guy was slapping his fins against the boat. Mama was diving under one side and popping out on the other. At one point, the baby was so close I could touch his fin. He spent most of the time rolling around so that you could rub his belly. And my goodness, if I told you I didn't turn into a complete ball of mush when the little guy was staring at me, my pants would be on fire. 
those are some beautiful creatures. Story 13. A homeless guy died a couple of feet away from me at the grocery store I was working at, and while I was calling an ambulance, the a-holes in line who saw it were all pissed that I took 30 seconds out of their lives by stepping away from the register. It hurt to see how little people cared simply because this guy was homeless. I also saw a drive-by where everyone missed, but I was pretty close to it, and another time where a guy did get hit, but I was walking the other way, so I just ran. Story 14 A couple of weeks ago, up at a lake in northern Wisconsin, we were staying at a cabin with a couple of buddies and a few girls. The two girls were white girls wasted by 4 o'clock. We all jumped in the sauna that was outside, and then we all ran and jumped in the lake. It was raining, which was pretty rad. There were about six of us in the lake, and then most people either went inside the house or back to the sauna. I stayed in the lake to take a piss, and one girl was left out with me. The water past the dock was only about three feet deep, and I was standing a bit further out doing my thing, and she was about five feet in front of me facing towards the shore. But she was down in the water a little past her neck. It confused me a bit, and I asked her jokingly if she was peeing too. She didn't say a word. She was moving kind of back towards me with her head half underwater, and I noticed that she was puking up this red booze that she'd been drinking all day. I thought she was just moving away from the puke, but no, she was just kind of half floating there. I saw her face was purple slash blue. Maybe it was the shock of the hot to cold, or she was just so drunk she couldn't stand in the water, but whatever it was, it was killing her. I reached down and grabbed her around the waist and brought her over to the dock. At this time, my buddy had to come outside and saw me carrying her. I threw her up on the dock, thank God it was only three feet of water, I'm 6'1", and not a little guy, tossed her up pretty easily. And we checked if she was breathing. We put her on her side and she just kept puking up booze and water and started breathing. About a minute or so later, her color was back and she was just all giggling like it never happened. She never did know what happened until that guy told her the next day. She cried and gave me a hug. Her blue face was the craziest thing I've ever seen, and I'll never forget it. TLDR pulled a drowning drunk girl out of a lake. Story 15. On a Toronto highway at 1 a.m. on a weekend, there was gridlock traffic. Why? Because of two accidents. The first one I didn't witness, but saw the result. Four cars thrown all over the highway. One flipped over, one smoking, one with a limp body spilling out of it, and the other completely totaled. Before driving past the wreckage, there were multiple ambulances trying to get through, but some dumbass didn't move aside and caused a collision with an ambulance and two other cars which left the ambulance looking like an accordion. I was stoned senseless and terrified. I wasn't the driver. It was not a good experience. I freaking hate rubberneckers. I once saw an accident involving a jackknifed Winnebago with a boat attached on the interstate. Although the accident only blocked one lane, the whole road was reduced to less than walking speed because of a-holes staring at the crash. The ambulances stuck at the rear of the jam were probably pretty pissed off, but not as pissed off as any injured people in the RV. Story 16. My very first day in New York City, I arrived at Newark and was getting a combination of bus slash train to Penn Station. A family came running behind us towards the platform, a crazed redhead screaming. A voice behind her yelled, Mindy, Mindy, you don't know where you're going. Then another voice yelled, where's Mindy going? And Mindy finally replied, there's only one train. During the bus ride portion of the journey, I saw police clearing up a crime scene of what looked like a mob hit chalk outlines, bullet casings, body bags, and crime scene tape, although I am led to believe this can be seen every day. Finally, in Times Square, a man approached me, put his hands on my shoulders, and asked, Excuse me, sir, are you Jesus Christ? What a city, eh? Random people asking or yelling about religious stuff in the middle of Times Square? Yeah, that was normal pre-pandemic. I'm visiting New York City for the first time right now. Went to Times Square today, a bunch of dudes selling weed and edibles. But the good part was, when I was leaving, it was a normal looking woman standing. She reached into her pocket and pulled out her hand with the pinky and thumb sticking out to resemble a phone. She then started having a conversation then an argument on the phone. In Queens, I was passing by Dunkin' Donuts. Some guy is standing about 10 feet away. He faced the street, stuck his index finger out, and yelled out, Hey you! while pointing at literally nothing, 
He stood in that position for about five seconds. Then he bolted inside the Dunkin' Donuts. Story 17. I work security on the side. I feel like I could give you a different answer every so often. Watched a guy the other day going through boxes of men's shoes and sniffing them, looking for ones with a foot scent. When he found them, he'd get a little fidgety. Went to the back of the department with a few boxes and was looking around heavily. But there was a family and a bunch of kids around, and he left abruptly. No joke. The way he was acting and how he was positioning things, he was about to screw a pair of Nikes. It was some wild crap. Watched a guy burst out of the store one time with about $1,300 in clothes and right into the side of his getaway vehicle, which then ran him the hell over. Not ashamed to say I laughed my ass off. He lived. People pooping, pissing, jerking, domestic violence, robberies, marriage proposals from a cracked out junkie, accidents. I've seen some crap. Security people have the best stories. My favorite one that kind of relates to your snatch and run guy was the guy who picked up a giant flat screen TV and ran out the door and down the street with it. About two minutes later, all you see is him and the TV flying through a plate glass window back into the store that he stole it from. We had to watch the cameras like five times before we spotted the tiny five foot two blonde loss prevention chick doing her flying tackle which is what sent him through the window. The best part was that after he was arrested, he had a chat with the police and he suddenly burst into tears. Apparently he thought if they charged him with the theft of it, it was like he paid for it. This was determined when he said they needed to be gentle while loading his TV into the cruiser truck, like the flight through the window was so great for it. They had to inform him that no, he couldn't keep the TV and he bawled all the way to the police car. Me and my ex were in a store in a mall, and I was looking at the shoes. We noticed two young women looking at the shoes, but they were behaving strangely. I whispered to my ex, I think those girls are going to steal something. I was right. The girls grabbed some shoes and ran out the door. The door was an exit directly into the parking garage, which is kind of stupid. There were two male employees close behind a counter, and one guy started running after the girls. He didn't stop them. The other employee said the insurance would cover the stolen goods, plus the security cameras caught them. I don't know whatever became of the crime scene. Story 18 was at a hotel front desk in Dallas on a business trip, turned around and saw a group of people in mascot costumes and I screamed. Turns out it was a furry convention, which I had to Google as I had never heard of it before. Then I saw one in full costume by the pool sunbathing must have been roasting. One time I went bowling and a pack of furries came up when we were halfway through our game. Apparently that alley's bowling league had three teams that were entirely of furries in full costume. We were just there on a practice day. My friend and I got drunk on bottomless mimosas and were walking to the boardwalk in San Diego. As we're going along, we walk past a group of people and they turn and start clapping and cheering. We think, huh, that's odd, and keep going. Another group of people offer us cupcakes, and being drunk, I take one and say thanks. The person says, thank you, all enthusiastically. Again, odd, but whatever. Yet another group comes up, and a little girl asks if I want a sticker. Sure, why not? And she puts a sticker on my hand. It's pink and says I'm a champ. We're beginning to wonder what's happening at this point and come up upon a group of people with a banner playing music, handing out water and people with cowbells and they take our picture. We awkwardly cheered on our drunk walk through and saw the banner for a run walk event raising money for cancer and we'd inadvertently gotten on this route. It was an interesting series of events and was the weirdest thing to happen that day. As we got closer, I stopped at a bathroom because I'd drunk like six mimosas. I walk in and it's dark as hell. There's a sink, a urinal, and then a stall. There's a bicycle leaning against the wall opposite the urinal. The stall door is closed and there's music that sounds like someone's playing Galaga coming from the stall. Bottomless mimosas are hitting, so whatever. As I'm peeing in this dimly lit bathroom, I notice there's a freaking circular hole cut into the partition between the urinal and the stall. Just as I'm realizing that I'm seeing a glory hole for the first time, the music pauses and it sounds like a tarp rustling. Someone has definitely stopped what they were doing and I'm assuming they're looking at my dick in hand. After what feels like the longest piss of my life, I wash my hands and walk out. The second weirdest thing of the day. We are almost to the boardwalk and I see someone in the distance hopping around. That's strange, but we keep on walking. We get closer and see it's a person in a dog costume. 
It's hot as hell, but whatever. We come around and turn, and there's an entire field of them in all sorts of different costumes hopping around, crawling and standing. Very bizarre, and the first time I'd actually seen furries. The funniest thing I've ever seen, and I wish I could find the picture I took, but there was an older couple with an actual pug on a leash that was just standing there frickin' staring at them. That dog had to be so confused, LMAO. I apologize for the rambling story. I'm drunk and forgot what the comment I replied to was and how it got started. Story 19. Found out today that my grandpa was a boy when the historic tornado of 39 hit Anoka. He was trying to find his brother and was pulled into the armory by a stranger and taken into the basement moments before the roof was blown off. Found his brother in the basement and was instructed by his brother to go straight home. On the way home, he came across a woman who had been beheaded by the tornado. He then saw a man on the ground who had been clutching something. He was too scared to see if he was alive and just ran home. His other brother was in a movie theater and it somehow didn't lose power or anything during the tornado. The movie just kept playing. So the older brother left the movie theater clueless about the tornado to see basically the entire town destroyed. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you would like to share with us, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again, and see you next time!